Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I actually have a very fascinating experiment that we're gonna take a look at that might make you change the way you look at GTA Online. Today, we're going to be taking some of the cars in GTA Online and slapping them with their real life price tags. Sounds pretty interesting, right? Well, if you like the idea and enjoy the video, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button, as well as the notification bell to stay updated with the latest content I put out. Let's go ahead and dive into this crazy reality. Now, first off, let's set the stage for this experiment. We all know that GT Online is a universe that is somewhat based in reality, but let's be honest, it's its own beast. I mean, flying cars everywhere, killer AI, and military grade submarines for only 2.2 million dollars yeah it has its own economy as well and let's face it the prices can sometimes feel a bit off compared to real life from your favorite supercar to off-roading suvs to crazy military vehicles the prices in gt online are just all over the place but what if they mirrored real life let's go ahead and find out what that reality would look like now, I want to give a huge shout out to Reddit user Banana Salvage. He's the actual person who came up with these real life prices. But the way we're going to do it is we're going to start with the legendary motorsports. We're going to sort by the two door category. And as you can see, we have some of the newer vehicles, the Bravado Buffalo EVX, uh, all the way down to the Pipster Growler. Now, the car economy in GT Online is pretty inflated. Over the years, though, it has gotten worse and worse. I mean, GT Online didn't start out with these crazy high priced cars. Back in the day when the game came out, the highest priced car was the Adder, which is a Bugatti, and it only cost about $1 million. Now you can see all these prices. Having a car almost $3 million is something that's just pretty normal nowadays in GT Online. So how do these prices compare to the real life prices? Warning, it's pretty triggering. So, all right, on the left, we'll just take an overview. On the left, we have the game prices. And then here on the right, we actually have the real life prices. And the first one right off the bat that you're probably like, wow, that's a huge difference is the new vehicle they just released, the Bravado Buffalo EVX, the electric Buffalo. In GTA, it is $2.1 million, $2.1 million, where in real life, it is only 60K. That is an absurd price difference. And one of the main questions that I hope this brings up, and I would like to hear people's answers in the comment section, is would you actually like a GT Online economy that was more realistic? like the cars on the right because just going through the list of them I, I mean not one by one but you can see obviously the bravado buffalo evx only 60k the itali gto stinger tt it's only a solid 250k not that bad but there are some pretty expensive ones still the virtue 2.3 million going down to the entity mt that one's also 3 million irl the sm722 3.2 million so it's not like all the cars are just super cheap. There are still some pretty expensive ones in the real life version of this hypothetical game. But of course, comparing it back to the game prices, I mean, the lowest one here is what? The Broadway at 925,000. And if you compare that to the IRL price, it's only 125K in real life. Honestly, the prices on the right almost reflect how the game started out. And I know the question I just asked, there's like a lot of factors that go into it because let's just take the Itali GTO Stinger TT, the one at the top middle, that red car. IRL, it is 250K. But in GTA Online, it is actually the new fastest car in the game. I think it goes like 168 miles an hour. So if you were to get that type of performance for only 250K in game, like, yeah, that would be a little crazy, which is why Rockstar priced it at 2.3 million but I do still think it's a valid question to ask. Like maybe for GTA 6 online, should Rockstar move back to a more realistic economy? Personally, I actually love this idea of having just a crazy difference in prices uh, between certain cars. Like in this real life scenario we have on the right, if you were to get that $3 million entity MT, more than likely you would be one of the very few that have that. So it would feel a lot more special if you saved up to get that particular vehicle. I mean, back in the day when you got the Adder, 
it took a very long time for people to get that one million dollars so it did feel special when you unlocked it and to end on the vehicles here there's honestly not a crazy like disparity between the prices yeah i know going from like 60k to 3 million maybe a big jump but when we go to warstock there's a massive jump but I think an economy where you had cars that were only 60K, and then you did have cars that were 3 million, that's pretty good compared to what we have now where just every single car is like $2 million. But speaking of the war stock, this is where things get real interesting. And I'm talking real, real interesting. So again, on the left, we have the game prices. On the right, we have the IRL prices. I don't know how realistic it is, but the, the biggest thing you might notice is the Kasaka. On the right, the IRL price he has at $5.5 billion. No, not million, billion with a B. Compared to the poultry price of only 2.2 million in GTA Line right now. That one is a little absurd, I'll grant you that, but some of these other ones are actually kind of neat. So like the Avenger on the right, it's 72 million. Imagine if you only saw the Avenger every once in a blue moon because only like a handful of people actually saved up that much to get this particular vehicle. I know it's a super useful vehicle and I look, I know it sucks if you had to grind that much to get just one vehicle, but it would make things feel a lot more special. And look, maybe 72 mil, maybe that's a little bit too much, but the general idea here I think is really great. The Raiju obviously we just got it in the game it is 4.1 million if you get the trade price irl dude that is a freaking top of the line military jet it is gonna cost a lot of money 77 million dollars if you did have these specialized vehicles that were crazy amounts like this it would give people something to work towards because that's one of the things in the game now it's like you don't really have anything to work towards once you sort of have all your businesses, once you have all your properties. You can buy what, a yacht? That's probably the most expensive thing, but it's not even that useful. Now on the flip side of things, the IRL prices sometimes aren't really that great. So like the, the next vehicle that just came out, the next plane, that Streamer 216 plane, the one right next to the Raiju, in real life, it is actually $4.5 million, but in GTA, Thankfully, it's cheaper. It's 2.2 because in, in GTA, it's pretty worthless. It's not really a useful vehicle. So if Rockstar were to go through with this sort of real life economy idea, look, they definitely would have to take some things here and there. If it's a car that's real expensive IRL, but it's just not going to be practical in the game. Yeah, make it pretty cheap. But you can see like so many other things are really cheap. Actually, like the taxi in real life, it's only like 20 something K where in the game, it is $650,000 for a freaking taxi. That little winky car that was introduced in the Kyle Preco update, in real life, it's only like 30K. In the game, it's a million freaking dollars for that. Again, the question I really just wanna pose, and I think it's an interesting topic to discuss, is should Rockstar have a realistic-ish economy? And, and not just what we have now where just everything is crazy overpriced. Like, when was the last DLC where a realistic, price for a vehicle was released you probably have to go back to like 2014 even the crappy cars nowadays like this truck this is a truck look it's a great looking truck i'm sure truck people love it in this game now it is one point what six million dollars for this this thing should be at max 100k and that's pushing it one thing that i think maybe rockstar is is sort of forgetting here and i don't know maybe they know better than me but if a lot of these newer cars were cheaply priced people might be willing to buy more of them like if you wanted that truck for instance but you wanted it in a couple of different versions because it has some cool customization options well that would mean you have to buy more garages you have to buy more garage space obviously rockstar wants to sell shark cards and stuff that's why they do price a lot of these vehicles super high but I mean, in my realistic idea of a economy of the game, you still have those crazy high prices. I think it would all even out if you had some of these smaller end stuff. That would be better for more casual people, people who don't really play the game that often. You could still buy some new vehicles, still customize them. But if you did want the Raiju, the new F-35 plane, you're going to have to grind for it. Or you're just going to have to make friends with someone in the session. Or if Rockstar really actually cared, they would have it spawn at Fort Zancudo. So if you didn't want to grind for $70 million, 
you can just go steal one and have fun with it that way. But if people were crazy enough, they could buy shark cards to buy it. Again, the, the 70 million maybe is a little too high, but I do think a more realistic economy would be great. And I hope that's what they go back to in GTA 6. And there you have it, folks. GTA Online with real world price tags. How many of your favorite cars could you afford if this was the case? Let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to hit the like, share the video, subscribe, all that stuff. For more GTA content. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.